Star Horse is good. Star Horse? Yep. Is that What's the kind of... Is that a, a crossover I don't know about? Nah, it's the new racing league that they're coming out with, like, from those animals in uh, Last Jedi. Oh, um, Star Horse. <laughs> yep. This went to a much more wholesome place than it initially started <laughs> in. <laughs> oh, welcome, 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 everyone. Welcome back to Hard Reset, a Cold North production. I'm your host, Patrick the Law Morris. Ben, having trouble. Gorgeous Ben Reynolds. Yeah. <laughs> having trouble pulling down that bong rip. And... Also joining us this week, the tenacious Tim Miller. Oh, hello. <laughs> you can see everything we do all in one spot over at coldnorthpro.com. Um, and that does also include our movies podcast, No Refunds, the podcast that watches bad movies so you don't have to. Ben, are you going to be okay? <laughs> Something. Something. Uh, so, yeah, coming up on... Uh, Coming up on Hard Reset number, what are we, Jesus, is this 113? I don't know. I lost track a lot. Yeah, no, it's Hard Reset number 113. No, it's number 20. It's not Roll Hard it. Reset number 20. Roll it to get 12. That's, that's better than 10. With a decent hit <laughs> stat. C- coming up on Hard Reset number 113, we're going to be talking about uh, MLB The Show. We will also be discussing some Forza news, as well as we're going to run down the Game Awards, talk about what happened there. But before we get to all that, I want to know what you guys have been playing this week. Ben, tell me what you've been playing. I have been playing Pokemon still. And, I mean, I will say that it is a very simple game, but it's still, I don't know, I think it's just like... Like the that you sent me that review from uh, girlfriend reviews, and I thought it was funny, but she was like complaining about how she can watch TV and play Pokemon, and I'm like, that's one of the best things about Pokemon. <laughs> Ben's like, I love that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's the nice. Yeah, thing. like it's I don't know, it's just kind of fun to like watch a show you've watched before and play Pokemon. <laughs> Yeah, I I did that, that a lot with the 3DS. Doesn't need to be on bo- on that into either thing. Yeah, I did that a lot with 3DS. Just played games and like watched a show I had already watched, and yeah. and like I think that there's some value to that. <clears throat> I mean, their and girlfriend I reviews started, video. I played. A- I played some games against my friend Jose as well, and uh, it's pretty cool how you can set everybody's Pokemon to level fifty, regardless of like. Oh, that is really cool. Actually, are so you can just have people balanced battle. That is really cool. So you can play just like a more uh, more level playing field multiplayer. Exactly. Nice. Exactly. And yeah, it's. I mean, it's pretty fun. Definitely. I don't know. Like I, I was telling you, you should get it because then you don't even have to bother with a starter. You can just have a Charmander as soon as you can trade. Yeah, I I <laughs> really really Charmander. or you could have a Larvitar. I really want to get it. I just can't like justify spending the money right now. I mean, that's fair. You could be like me and just toss out your starter immediately as soon as you get it. I would love to have a Charmander. I would love. More so a Squirtle, but you know, whatever. Let's just Squirtle make... is not in the game yet. See, neither of those are Cyndaquil, so I don't care. Ugh. I mean, if we're going to talk about what the best starter is in this opening of this podcast, <laughs> we all know. Let's all say it on three. One, two, Charmin. three. Fennekin. Wow. Charmin. No. Tim, you didn't say one. I already said mine. Cyndaquil? Cyndaquil. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, yeah. Definitely Fennekin is the best starter ever. Charmander. 
I'm glad we can all agree on a type at least. <laughs> yeah, at least we all got to the fire type. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what Fennekin is. Oh man, Fennekin is so badass. Um, no, so that's like I do really want to play it, and I will eventually. So keep that keep that Charmander waiting for me. Keep him warm. Fair enough. And uh, oh, I saw Duraludon. Okay, Tim, if you need a Duraludon, I'm breeding them. Sweet. <laughs> I'll take 10. <laughs> ben, you ripped that bong so hard, your eyes just look so fucking stoned. They feel that way, too. <laughs> oh, man. Tim, what have you been playing this week? I've been playing something in a bit of a different genre. I've been playing Halo Reach since that has come out on uh, Steam. Me, I too. That was a JRPG. Oh, yeah. It's the best new JRPG out there. If you haven't played Halo Reach, you're missing out. <laughs> I have also been playing Halo Reach. Um, not on PC, though. So tell us tell us about PC. Like, tell us about how's it, how's it play. The controls suck oh, on really? PC. Their initial setup is absolute garbage. I had to redo almost half of my controls to make it somewhat playable. Are you playing with a on an Xbox One controller? So I started off playing mouse and keyboard, and that's what I'm kind of complaining about because it's just that bad. Um, what was off about the, it? Was it like acceleration or? Uh, nope. Um, it had nothing to do with mouse. It just where the button layouts were. Like changing weapons was, I think, like one or two, and oh, everything geez. like. There was barely anything bound to the mouse besides throw grenades and fire. So it was like, I have to go. I had to change a lot of that up. And yeah, I think the like, thing that kind of pisses... Mice have like 14 pisses, buttons these days. Exactly. And I think the thing that pisses me off the most is that if I want to change weapons, I have to scroll down, but I can't scroll up. I can't like choose both for like changing my weapons. So like, oh, one really? is bound... Yeah, one is bound right now to change weapon. The other one's change grenades. It's just, it's a mess. So I've kind of changed back to playing with controller just because it's been what I normally have been playing with all these years. It feels a lot more familiar. Yeah. Um, and they still have universal bumper jumper, so I can't oh. can't complain. I love bump and jump. I that's been one of the strengths of the Master Chief Collection. I've also been ha- playing Halo Reach, so we'll just bundle ours in together right now. Um, yep. But that has been one of the biggest strengths of Master Chief Collection is they have the control schemes and they have so many different options. And then they have the universal options where you apply it and it runs through all the games. So it standardizes the controls across every Halo game in the in the MCC. And that's really awesome. Yep. What the fuck is the MCC? Master Chief Collection. Oh. Okay. You know, that thing that <laughs> See, we've been I talking about. I thought you for a second and I was like, wait. A <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So, you have you been playing multiplayer or campaign? Um, so, I played through campaign um, about one and a half times now. I played through on Heroic with my buddy Brian. <clears> and now I'm trudging through it on Legendary by myself. Because okay. I have to. Um, Naturally. And then I've been playing a lot of multiplayer. Um, one thing I don't like about that is the fact that I have to play multiplayer to unlock stuff now. I yeah. can't just spend my points on what I want to unlock. That's kind of one big downside of getting it. Everything's now locked in some into pretty much what you'd see as a season pass through like Apex or Fortnite, something like that, like a battle pass in a sense. You just keep playing, you unlock stuff. And I don't mind that kind of system. It gets me to play more multiplayer, <clears> but <throat> I wish I could spend my points on the things I want to unlock. Instead of just these other things that are like, oh, I'm going to throw this away as soon as I get this next unlock anyways. Yeah, so. the unlocks have been handled really poorly. And especially considering how much customization there is in Reach. Yeah. Like Reach, them, they they gave you Noble Six as like, this is your Spartan. And like, you've always been in like inhabiting Master Chief. But now like you get to design your own. And then they immediately lock all of the customizations behind multiplayer stuff. And it's like, okay, that's fine. And I understand that. But like, you expect me to wait to play the campaign until after I've unlocked and like customized my Spartan through multiplayer. But like, I want to see the Spartan that I want in the, in the campaign. 
Did, yeah, I'm, on, when it originally came out, couldn't you customize them bef- before that? Uh, you, so you did have a, you did have a few options at launch, um, but then as you played through the game, whether it was campaign multiplayer, you got um, points that you could put towards um, right. new cosmetics. But now it's you just have to play multiplayer, and you have and to you just unlock them one by one. And, yeah, weird. And and with the like as far as the the customization they locked it all down from the beginning with yep. the xbox one version and the pc version of reach which really sucks because it's like you don't even get any options i guess you get color options but other you than you don't color, even get shoulder pads to level 10 exactly and that's like come on yeah give me at least some base options to start with like even if it was like three different helmets or three different chest plates Three different types of shoulder pads. Don't give me everything right away, but give me something at least to like bait me in. Exactly. You got to be a master baiter. And, Absolutely. And Tim, are you getting? So do you get because you're playing it on Steam, right? Yes. Do you get Xbox Live achievements through I Steam? I do. Everything. Everything I do on there good on <clears throat> my Xbox Live account and vice versa. Okay. Cool. So, so you must have gotten a ton of achievements then because. So I'm about, I would say two thirds or maybe three quarters of the way through the campaign. And every single achievement is a rare achievement. Yep. Wait, but why is it on Steam if it's also on Game Pass? It was just another way for people to buy it on PC. Oh. So you paid for it even though you already technically have it for free on PC? Um, so the Steam library, they're not cross compatible yet. If you play on Steam, you can't play with anyone on Xbox Live. And vice versa. Uh, they're going to be combining them eventually. Oh wow! Well, think about that. Yeah, but a lot of the friends that I have that are currently playing um, are, are playing on through Steam. Steam. So it was like, gotcha. all right, well, I guess I'll pay forty dollars to get the collection, get on Steam, because why the hell not? And it gets you all of the all, the rest so, of the collection. For that forty dollars, the rest of the collection is not out yet. Unfortunately, but it's, they'll be they're doing it's the coming. trickle. Yeah, but be... so then if you got it on the Game Pass version on PC, then you could play with me and Pat on Xbox One from yep. your PC, though, right? Yep. Nice. Yeah, and and Halo is like Halo Reach is. I'm cor- I correct me if I'm wrong, Tim. You're you're more of this is more your field than mine. But I, it's like the third most played game on on Twitch right now. I uh, I have no idea. I don't pay attention to that stuff, honestly. It's back in a big way. Like this is yeah, this is a me. major resurgence of Halo. Weird. And and I really hope like because I think that this reception of Halo Reach on Steam has been has been better than anyone really anticipated. And then I think that like, I really hope to see them trickle the rest of the games out. Uh, one, two, three, and four on PC to see this, this success carry through the rest of the collection. And then we get to infinite and then it's, and like halo is just, I hope that throughout the next year they continue to climb and halo becomes so much more relevant again. Yeah, and I think coming back to PC is definitely going to help because I know a lot of people I play with, they don't own Xbox Ones. They haven't owned a new generation console in like two generations. They just play on PC. Now they have the ability to play that game or any of those games now, which is fantastic. And it's one that they've been wanting for so long. Yeah. And I think they're going to see an explosion even beyond the Halo Reach numbers when they get to Halo 3. Yep. And also, another nice thing about Steam, if you just want to buy Reach, 10 bucks. You don't have to buy the whole collection. Oh, it's, really? Yep. Just 10 bucks. If you don't want to buy the rest of the collection, you can buy them in pieces if you like. Of course, awesome. it is cheaper to buy all of them to at 40. To just buy the whole thing. Save but, 10 bucks. I mean, for those people that don't wa- really want to spend that money, don't want to play the other <laughs> ones, then you know what? Go right ahead. Yeah. So That's really awesome. Yeah. No, yeah. I'm... I'm uh... I'm playing through the campaign, and man, it's like, God, that's such a good campaign. Yeah. It's fucking difficult, though, on Legendary. 
Like, yeah. I forgot how bad this one is. Ethan and I are playing on Heroic, and yep. I have never finished Reach on Legendary, but don't really have the desire to. Heroic's pretty tough. Yeah. Heroic <clears throat> was a bit, and Legendary is just like, I'm pulling my hair out. Yeah. Well, I think I've gotten through the worst of it, though. So, oh, that's good. So, uh, that's what we've been playing. But now it's time for the news. It now. Meow. News show. It's the news show. Anyone else just hear a cat? <laughs> I'll be a cat for you. Oh, oh. <laughs> sound bite that. Uh, so the news, um, were, I mean, lots of news this week, but we're really only going to discuss a couple of things because most of it's going to be encompassed in the topic of the show, but this week's news courtesy of Ben. So Ben, I might need you to fill me in on a couple of things here and there. Okay. Um, but Forza is getting or got a battle royale yeah and it looks fucking cool as shit yeah i kind of want to play it myself 72 cars everyone starts off in the same mini cooper and as the ring closes you can get car upgrades Mm -hmm. and And you can be like aggro and like go try and crash into people and shit i guess or you don't have to you can just chill which is like yeah you can just like cruise around which is kind of how you can play any other battle royale. Like you can hide yeah, and, yeah. and just play the game, which that's like, this is so weird and so cool. I kind of feel like the three of us should stream it together. I'd be down. Yeah. Maybe time. I just, because like, this is so nuts. I, maybe we'll play it when on, maybe we'll play it in Colorado. But, like, very strange. Um, I'm curious about it. And, like, Forza is such a good game. I've been wanting to buy a racing wheel for quite a while. And I'm not going to pull the trigger yet. But, like, this this made me rethink it today when you sent it to us, Ben. Honestly, if I were you, I would hold off because we're almost into the next generation. Yeah, that's a good so... point. But <clears throat> Microsoft has said that all of your Xbox One accessories are forwards compatible. Ooh. So. For the worst name in the world. Well, we'll get to that. Yeah. <laughs> um, But then also. Shit, what other news did we have to talk about? Uh, MLB The Show. Oh, thank you, Tim. Um, so last week, so for a really long time, uh, Sony has had the exclusive rights to the MLB to make the MLB simulation game. And it's been MLB the show since 2006. And, uh, they ran all their other competitors out of town. Um, and it's been PlayStation exclusive for a really long time. It was the only place you could play a baseball sim game. But last week, Sony re-signed their deal with uh, the MLB, and the MLB is forcing their hand, and so now the show will be appearing on other consoles. They didn't say platforms. They very specifically said consoles. And so, like, that's just very strange to me because Microsoft has been pretty open about it about like yeah our games can appear pretty much anywhere as long as you're playing our games we don't care where you're playing them uh, but sony has been much more buttoned up about that and so starting in 2021 it sounds like the show is going to be on xbox and uh switch because phil spencer retweeted the mlb announcement and replied with I don't know, some fucking emojis. And then Nintendo of America retweeted and replied with a baseball emoji. So I know, Tim, this probably doesn't make a big difference to you. 
I mean, I'm a fan of sports games. I'm glad that everyone's going to be able to play it everywhere now. But it again, it's not really my type of game. So I'm yeah. glad they're doing it, but not sure I'll be getting it. Yeah. And Ben, I know you've played the show in the past. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I just always get very frustrated and end up not being that into it. Yeah. I mean, for us, it's like we all have PlayStations and could have played on PlayStation anyways. Yeah. So it's not that big of a deal. But like, yeah, I kind of see this as like a win, win, win. Like the people on Xbox and Switch who only have Xbox or Switch are going to be able to play that play now. Like the people who wanted to play are going to be able to play. Um Microsoft and Nintendo are winning because they're getting this this really amazing baseball sim. And then on top of that, Sony is going to sell more copies of the show. Like a lot more, I would I would imagine. Yeah. So, it seems like something that Sony I'm sure was aware would be a good idea, but just refused to do out of like a competitive like they were they were kind of Cutting off their nose to spite their face kind of situation. Yeah. Well, and... Because there was the... What was the other game that existed? Two, or there, there was a 2K, wasn't there? A 2K baseball so, game or something? Yeah, so EA used to have... Uh, was it MVP baseball? <clears throat> and uh, 2K had MLB 2K. And uh, the 2K game lasted quite a bit longer, but even that went out while we were in college. Yeah, I remember they were never uh, nearly as good. Oh, no. Not even close to the show. Yeah. But it was the only one on Xbox, and uh, so Wes played a lot of 2K, MLB 2K. That's funny. (laughs) But, no, I remember my biggest problem with uh, the MLB, the 2K MLB game was their sense of scale they just really it felt like the ballpark was really small and i feel like the show has always really nailed that so yeah so yeah i mean it's not really not really applicable to any of the three of us but like i think it's pretty cool like it's fun to see these like our our preconceived notion of what exclusive means is kind of being redefined in this coming generation yep and now I think... we need is just for nfl blitz to come back oh god <laughs> we, what honestly what we need more than that is we need nhl hits oh that's a good one too hits was such a fucking sweet game basically any sports game that doesn't adhere to the rules is what we need yeah, Ben and I enjoyed the bigs <laughs> quite a bit on the Wii. Yeah, that was pretty fun. Yeah. I even bought it for 360. Xbox. Yeah, because I had so much fun playing it on Wii. Yeah. I think we even <laughs> split it on Wii because you just wanted to play it so bad. And you didn't even own a Wii. That's fair. <laughs> but, yeah, so it, it'll be interesting to see how this shakes out. But now we're going to move into some some other news with our topic of the show. Topic of the shoe. Got any shoes? All right. Topic of the show. We're going to be talking about Game Awards 2019, what was announced, and who won. Uh, Do you guys have any preference on which order we should go in? Do you want to just run through the winners real quick? Because obviously we're going to talk about the big thing. That was announced, or I mean, that was shown nobody off. really won this year. Let's be real. Okay, so <laughs> uh, so let's talk about game of the year because that one really surprised me. Yeah, I wasn't expecting it to go in that direction. I mean, great game, but Sekiro really over all the other nominees over Control, Resident Evil Two, and Smash. Like, see, over yeah, that seems like yeah. a weird. Well, it's mm. it's very strange. It really is. I mean, I I would say I enjoyed Sekiro. 
Uh, I guess I didn't enjoy Sekiro as much as Death Stranding, but I can. I think that Sekiro was on a wider scale much more enjoyed than than Death Stranding. Um, but like, ah, I don't know. I it was. I feel like it was the dark horse for me in in Game of the Year because like the nominees being Sekiro, Control, Death Stranding, Resident Evil Two, Smash, and Outer Worlds, and like, I feel like. Sekiro and Outer Worlds were the two that I was like, those two aren't gonna win. Yeah, Outer's one was Outer yeah, Outer Worlds was the one that I kind of pushed aside. Um But yeah, um yeah, I don't know. It just it feels weird, but I mean good on them. It was a fun game. So yeah. I'm beating it because it's ridiculously fucking hard, but still a fun game. Yeah, I mean it's it's definitely a good game. But it's just not as good as like three other games on the list like i also don't feel like it was as good as a of a game as last year's game of game of the year like winner and contenders uh so i mean 2018 and this is this is a conversation that's been had a lot in this year is like there has been no like absolute standout this year the way there was last year like Last year, the there were three that were, like, absolute jaw droppers. There was God of War, Spider-Man, and Red Dead Redemption 2. And this year, not only were there not three of those, there wasn't even one of those. Yeah. As far as, like, gigantic AAA, huge release. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, I guess since we're since we're talking about that, um, quick side sidebar for you guys. Oh, I thought you said Quake, and I was like, "What Quake?" I was like, "Wait a minute, we're getting a new Quake." Uh, actually, I think we are. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure we are. But... Yeah, but quick sidebar for you guys: Is 2020 gonna be one of the best years for video games? I don't think so. I mean. 2020 is pretty stacked already. The front half. We don't know about the second half. I guess we don't know what else is to come. Cyberpunk and traditionally early in systems lives. There's not. They're it's a little dry. It it is dry, but that's happening right at the end of the year, and so this like 2020 is. It's. It, I mean, a very small percentage of 2020 will be uh series x and ps5 the vast majority of 2020 will be the swan song for the ps4 xbox one generation and so, so it'll like, be a lot like 2011 uh 2013 actually or yeah that's what i mean yeah and so i mean looking at the games we've we've got confirmed for 2020 cyberpunk final fantasy last of us part two ori and the will of the wisps Halo Infinite, Doom Eternal, Animal Crossing, uh, Psychonauts, No More Heroes, Ghost of Tsushima. Is Kerbal 2 coming out next year? Uh, I think so. Neo 2 is also coming out next year. Like, yep. it's Kerbal is coming out next year. Oh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Sick. Sick as fuck. But, like, it, I think 2020 is going to be quite the year for video games. We'll see. Um, but, yeah, so, so yeah, Sekiro was a little bit little bit of an oddball there, but I'm happy for him. I mean, it, it is a very good game, like you said, Tim. Uh, best Game Direction nominees were Death Stranding, Control, Resident Evil 2, Sekiro, and Outer Wilds. Uh, the winner was Death Stranding, and I think that that was... I think that that's well-deserved because, like... They needed to acknowledge what Kojima did. Yeah, he took gaming in a, di- a direction that's never been done before and did it phenomenally, even if it wasn't well received by everyone. Exactly. He set out. He did what he set out to do. So. And they're they're not gonna like with as polarizing as that game was, they weren't gonna acknowledge that in Game of the Year. No. And it was very much like his one central vision. Like, it was his vision. 
and that they realized that of course the team realized but like he that was that was directing a game no doubt uh, i'm trying i'm looking for the for the big ones because i'm trying not to just bore you guys to pieces and ben took way too big of a bong rip and now he's i've just totally lost his attention <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, we, I don't know. It, it, I didn't play that game. Yeah. Uh, best narrative. <clears throat> uh, nominees were Disco Elysium, A Plague Tale, Innocence, Control, Death Stranding, The Outer Worlds. Uh, the winner was Disco Elysium. I never I, played it. So. I never played it. Yeah, I don't really have much to say. I think Control had a pretty good narrative. Um, it, was, it was all right. I don't think I've finished Control yet, though. So, oh yeah, you uh, you should. I just I got to a point where it's like, eh, am I really playing this because I like it, or am I just playing it to finish it? And then I realized I was just playing it to finish it at that point, so I kind of stopped. Yeah, that's fair enough. Uh, best art direction was Control, Death Stranding, Gris, uh, Sayonara, Sayonara Wild Hearts, Sekiro, and Zelda. And control one. I think right. well deserved. They did a lot with a very limited color palette and made it look really incredible. Yep. If only it ran I think, well. I think personally I preferred Zelda, but that's just me. Uh yeah, I, I I really liked the the art direction of Zelda. I thought that looked incredible. Um I would say best score, but like Watching, so you know, every year they do the, uh, the like, mon the mashup of the major themes, the major theme music of each of the game of the year nominees, and they do like yeah. a really big performance with the live orchestra, and it's really awesome. And twenty seventeen was incredible. Twenty eighteen was also really good. Um, but this year it was like, man, music and games really sucked this year. <laughs> <laughs> So, if you guys get the chance, probably don't watch that because it was boring. Yeah. Go rewatch Green last year's. Better. Green Day was cool. Uh, Churches at the beginning was really cool. Um, but anyways, nominees were Death Stranding, Cadence of Hyrule, uh, Death, Devil May Cry 5, Kingdom Hearts 3, Sayonara Wild Hearts, Death Stranding 1. I think that that's good because Death Stranding had some really good music, like some some interesting like soundtrack, not like original score. Um, I mean, we'll hit one more because I see I've totally lost Ben. Uh, <laughs> best performance: Mads Mikkelsen as Cliff in Death Stranding, Ashley Birch as uh, Pavardi Holcomb in Outer Worlds. Courtney Hope as Jesse Faden in Control, Laura Bailey as Kate Diaz in Gear, Gears 5, Matthew Peretta as uh, Dr. Darling in Control, and Norman Reedus as Sam Porter Bridges in Death Stranding. Ben, in our predictions episode, you really sold me on Matthew Peretta, and I, like, you sold me so hard on Matthew Peretta that I was upset when he didn't win. Who was he again? He was uh, Dr. Darling in Control. Oh, yeah, I thought he was, yeah, he was good. He was really good. And then Mads Mikkelsen won. And Mads Mikkelsen, like Cliff, is a really cool character. Um, it's, he's I a wish, pretty good FedEx man. Well, he was. Mm, he's not a FedEx man. I wish he had been there oh. to accept the award. So he's not a porter? He is not. That's Sam. But yeah, so overall, I mean... As far as the actual awards go, slow year, slow slow awards uh, show. So that was kind of a bummer. Oh, what? The player's choice. The nominees were Fire Emblem Three Houses, Death Stranding, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, and Smash Ultimate. I did not know Jedi Fallen Order was able to be considered. I think it's because it's a player's choice and not... An actual other award. Oh. Well, Ben, I know that you mentioned that it's probably your game of the year. Fallen Order? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. If it was actually considered this time around, I would say 
absolutely really it's been it's been my favorite game this year by far interesting i can't tell if ben froze or if he's sitting really still oh Oh, he's gone we lost ben (laughs) (laughs) well we'll just press on i'm sure he'll join join back when he can um so moving on to announcements though that's kind of where the meat and potatoes for this this year's show was absolutely uh let's see i had it pulled up and now i've lost it oh he's back ben i thought we had lost you i couldn't tell Uh, my computer just shut off randomly Mm. oh i couldn't tell if you were sitting really still or if you had the the screen had froze um so game announcements uh, the big ones, Godfall was announced for PlayStation 5 and confirmed as a PlayStation 5 game. Uh, there was a lot of Dungeons & Dragons talk. There was a lot of Magic the Gathering talk. Um, looking over, Ghost of Tsushima got a pretty pretty beefy trailer. Um, did you guys watch that? I actually I have not. <clears throat> so you should because it... I mean... I'm really stoked for that game. Like, I'm really hyped for that game. Ben, I think you've mentioned that you were you were excited for it previously. Yeah, I definitely. I think it looks freaking sweet. I'm definitely very excited for it. And then it got confirmed for summer 2020. Hmm. Okay. Which was not what I was expecting. I don't know. I mean, they put out... Didn't God of War come out in the summer? God of War came out in April. Hmm. Um, but... Didn't Spider-Man come out in the summer then? Spider-Man September, came out in September. Yeah. So, yeah. End of summer. Fair enough. Uh, but, so, I was kind of expecting... Because they don't have anything announced for the fall. And... The Last of Us Part 2 is due out on May 29th. And so putting Ghost of Tsushima in the summer, they're going to want to steer clear of The Last of Us, give people time to play both, since they're both exclusives. I'm thinking maybe they're saying summer, and it's going to be like Spider-Man, like you were saying, Ben, like September. Yeah. Yeah, I see it being late summer, especially when most of these games that are going to be coming out next year are going to be on PS5, Xbox Series X when they come out next year, anyways. So, do you think they're going to get? Do you think they're going to get like specific versions for the next gen consoles? I think so. I think a few of them will at least. Yeah. It's and it'll if be... not then I'll ex- I'm expecting them to have like oh if you've got the PS4 version here you go but the here's PS4 and you've got res. the high re- yeah here's the up yeah. version of it yeah I, I fully expect that but I'm not sure if there'll be if there will be a ton of like PlayStation 5 Series X versions of the game or of the games um, also announced was Sons of the Forest so a uh, sequel to the forest which I recently picked up on sale on PlayStation for 12 bucks. Was it fun? I haven't played it yet. Ethan and I are going to play it together. So I'm pretty stoked because I've been like, I was stoked for that game back when they announced it and said it was coming to PS4 in 2014. And it didn't come to PS4 until I think earlier this year. So I'm excited to play it, but I'm also very hesitant. Um, the the trailer for the sequel looked really cool, really creepy. So we'll see how that pans out. Fair enough. Uh Surgeon Simulator 2 looks pretty funny. I mean, all of yeah, those, those simulator games. They're all ridiculous, so who doesn't want to be a surgeon? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then uh The Wolf Among Us 2 got reannounced. Yep. So, Tim, I know that that you play the most Telltale games of all of us. Wait, but I thought Telltale Close is gone. Exactly. That's why this is interesting. Mm -hmm. So, to my understanding, another company basically 
bought up the the name and a lot of the IPs that they had. Huh. And is basically like and they hired a like a small portion of the former Telltale staff. And they're basically reviving Telltale but like really really pumping the brakes because that's that seems to be what Telltale was like where they stumbled was they just had too many irons in the fire all at once. Yeah, they had a lot of projects out and a lot of ones that just never got sequels, which Ex- kind of exactly hurt them a bit. Like, I don't think Batman got a sequel. I'd never played that one. I know Game of Thrones did get its second game that was rumored for four or five years. Batman um, got a season two. I don't think it got no, it never did. They said it was coming, but it never got released. Really? Yeah. As far as I know anyways, cuz otherwise I would have played it cuz the first was actually really good. Um, I mean, I'm going to look that up, but it like the <clears throat> it's but it, to your point, Tim, they had so many IP license, IPs licensed. And then it just like Oh yeah, no, it got a season 2. It was called The Enemy Within. Now, hmm. um, so maybe you'll want to check that out. Uh, I might have to now. But they they had so many IPs licensed, and it was just like they weren't able to put out enough quickly enough to to make enough money to to manage all those IPs. And the problem is, like with that, you had a very niche kind of game. It's a story based game, and there's not much gameplay to it. It's Make your choices, choose your own adventure kind of stuff. And, again, that's very niche. You're buying all these IPs up for a niche market. And to sell to, a, able to a very limited number of people. <laughs> yep. And I just feel like they were spending more money on the licensing than they were actually pulling in from it, which is pretty much what led to their demise. Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah. But then also... Uh, Senua's Saga, Hellblade 2. So I saw that. I'm excited for it. I loved the first one. Great. Um, it's, I don't even know how to describe it. It's kind of like an adventure puzzle game. Because, like, the combat wasn't super heavy. But, like, there were a lot of, like, weird environmental puzzles where you had to stand in specific places to create symbols to like unlock runes and move on it was very very strange but very good storytelling i heard it was really good and that's what ninja theory made and then so that one actually i think it originally launched on the playstation 4 and then it came to xbox and switch later on and that was before ninja theory was acquired by microsoft but now hellblade one is on all platforms but also now microsoft owns ninja theory do you think that microsoft is going to play nice and just put it out on all platforms or do you think that they're going to use hellblade 2 as an xbox pc exclusive i could see it coming into all platforms it's one of those i don't think it's one of those huge ips that's going to bring them in enough money if they stick to just the Xbox and PC. Okay. I don't think... So I don't think it'll even be able to come to Switch. Just looking at it. it yeah, it might be too intensive in that sense. Yeah. But PlayStation, definitely, I see coming to. Okay. That's... Yeah. I mean, Microsoft has just been so... Like we were saying earlier, they've been so much of like... We don't care where you're playing them just as long as you're playing our games. Yep. That it would be interesting to see uh Senua's Saga come to PlayStation 5. But with Senua's Saga came the big the big announcement, the Xbox Series X is what they're calling Project Scarlet and we got to look at the uh at the actual console. It looks like a small form factor PC. The console has been very polarizing. What are you guys' thoughts on it? Terrible name, cool looking console. Okay. Agreed. So 
Ben, let's let's start with just the look of the console. Why do you think it it looks like? What do you like about it? Um, I well, I guess I would say that I like the. Uh... I just like the simplicity of it really is the biggest thing probably it's I mean it's just it just looks clean yeah and it seems like it's going to be small which is nice compared to the original Xbox 1 the cuz that was fucking gigantic thing was a brick it was a VCR technically <laughs> yeah. yeah it looked pretty bad i mean i i defended it at the, at the time but like looking back on it yeah that thing looked pretty bad <laughs> mhm <laughs> and but I, yeah um... the small the small form factor is really nice it looks like i'll be able to just put it right on my shelf like without having to move anything it's just that small and compact which is amazing considering it's supposed to have more power than the One X. So uh-huh. it's it's supposedly about five times as powerful as the One X. That's fucking insane. And it's about a foot tall. Uh, and then about six inches square. Yeah, that's absolutely tiny. Yeah, yeah that that's is more powerful than a One X. Miniature. Let's see. I saw some estimated measurements. Based on the size of a USB A port. Well, and, I mean, because you the you know what the the controller next to it, we know the scale of that controller. Exactly. So, I mean, it. Yeah, yeah. It, it looks like it's about two and a half, three controllers high, and it's one controller wide. Which would be, I'd say, it's probably about yeah, like probably about three controllers top tall and one controller wide. Yeah. Yeah. So and like also probably... that disk drive. Yeah, exactly. There's there's a lot of things there that we can use for reference. And so I think that about a foot tall, about six inches square. And to to think about like what like what you guys were saying, the fact that they're putting roughly five times the power of a one X in that is unbelievable. And honestly, looking at it now, it kind of scares me because it looks like they have that one vent in the top for cooling. And I feel like that could possibly cause problems. I hope they've worked it out. I mean, there's there's potentially vents along the uh, like on the back side of it too. I we aren't seeing the full picture, and And like also, I bet there's probably some on the underneath because it looks like it sits on like yes a base thing. That's that's what I was about to say. It it sits a little bit lifted up somehow, and so I bet it has on the bottom. I would imagine that's probably the intake, and then the top is the exhaust. Yeah, that um, would make sense. I've I've heard that it like supposedly it runs very quiet. Uh and I mean like I think it looks fantastic. I I think it looks really cool. I like that they're that they're so shamelessly uh copying like small form factor PCs and I know that I mentioned it in our chat, but it it I looks feel like they're copying like an Apple TV. Like it looks yeah, like exactly. a big Apple TV. It looks like an Apple product with surface sensibilities, like surface design choices. And so it's an Apple product in the sense that like it's small, it's clean, it's very minimalist, and then it just looks very in line with the surface line of products. Yeah, absolutely. And I love that because I I think that Apple makes beautiful products, and I think that the Surface line specifically are they look amazing. I mean, if I if I had to buy a a PC, I would buy a Surface. But then there's the name. But then yeah. there's the name. So tell us ben tell us like unload on me your thoughts about this name it's just i mean it's it's a terrible name like i i was we were talking about it earlier and it's like now like i mean there's just like the so much potential for confusion because the last system that they released was the xbox one x yeah and now they're releasing the xbox series x like just, just just the letter X. That's all they got to change. Exactly. If they had just gone with any other letter except for S. Yeah, don't do S, guys. Or or one. Just don't do 
X one or S and then you're good. Yeah. Like anything else, basically you could call it series fucking yellow if you wanted <laughs> <laughs> or call it series black. And that's actually pretty badass. Yeah. That's actually pretty cool. And then you're then Pat can jerk off when they call when they make series white and that's the more powerful next generation. I would love that. And I would absolutely, <laughs> I would absolutely sell my black one to buy a white one. Exactly. Because I have that problem. <laughs> That's racist. Well, well, they might get that criticism actually if they did call it that, which I don't know. <laughs> I mean, that's just that's really a fault of society being too sensitive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's really but, a societal like, problem. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm with you, Ben, on that. Like they're it's, falling I, into this. They're falling into the same trap that the Wii U fell into. Your naming convention is not different enough to sell a console. And the general masses, a.k.a. parents who don't know anything about gaming, yes, are going to really That's... be on board with this. Because it's like, oh, it's a Series X? Isn't that the same thing as the One X? Why do you need that? It just well, looks smaller. What Keep what you were saying. The parents will go into a gaming store and they're like, yeah, I'm trying to get my kid an Xbox. And the people will be like, oh, yeah, which one? <laughs> and they'll be like, oh, the, the one with the X. And they're like, well, there's oh, like seven actually, of those, so. both of them have Xs. So this is and awkward. They'll be like, oh, this one's 500 and this one's 350. And they'll be like, oh, I'll go with the cheaper one. I yeah. bet I bet the one X will come all the way down to 250. Probably. Yeah, probably. Um, so uh, as long as we're here, what do you guys think it's going to retail for? 500? See, I don't. That was the mistake they made last time. It was too expensive. Yeah, like that's kind of why they lost out early in the generation. If they were smart, I want to say bring it down to like four hundred, maybe even three fifty, just because of the look of the form factor. I get that it's way, way, way more powerful, but for something of that size and of this nature, if you put it up at five hundred bucks, people are just gonna push it aside exactly like they did with the Xbox One at the very beginning of the generation. Exactly like they did with the PS3 at the very beginning of that generation. Uh, I yeah. agree with you, Ben, but also the PS3 was six hundred. Yeah, Gamer, and we've proven that we don't want to pay more than four hundred dollars for a console. I that's think that's been thing. proven over the past fifteen years. That's like kind of our mark, because at that point, it's like, why not just build a PC? If I'm going to be spending that much money anyways. $400 seems to be the sweet spot. Um, but I think that if Sony and Microsoft both come out at $500, like the parity, I think will I think people will accept it and be okay with it. I, I know that I'll be fine paying $500. And, and that's something that like I I have had difficulty removing myself and thinking about someone else's perspective. And it wasn't until Ben was like, think about a mom going to the store and she doesn't know because like I was totally fine with the name series X until Ben said that. And I was like, Oh, I'm fine with the name series X because I'm super familiar with this stuff, but not everyone is. And so like when the Wii U came out, I knew the Wii U was a new console, but you know, no casuals did. Yeah, honestly, yeah, at like, first oh, I actually thought that the Wii U, that it was like that you could buy like the controller and just use it with a Wii. Yeah, that it was like a tablet controller for the Wii. Yeah, that's honestly what I thought at first. And that's again poor naming convention and poor marketing. Yep. Yeah. So hopefully that the Series X gets a better marketing team on it to help sell that it's not the same thing. But I still don't see it going over well. Yeah. For sure. So there's also the uh, there's a lot of speculation. People are saying that they're going to launch a cheaper, less powerful version, um, supposedly Series S. And so Series S. So if if they do that, do you guys think that maybe they could hit that five hundred dollar mark with the Series X and then sell the Series S as like a hey, you're not so hardcore and you want to go to the Series S if they can hit, like, 350 for the Series S? I mean, if they do it do that way, then yes, I could see them possibly pushing for 500 with the X. But, again, like, you've got the Switch at $300 right now. I mean, they've got to try to compete with that when it's one of the hottest-selling consoles right now. And putting it $200 above, like... 
you're only selling Halo, which I can now get on PC. Yeah. I don't think people are going to be able to go for it. I don't. For, like, um, anything over 400 is going to be hard to swing for a lot of people. I I do agree. Just kind of playing devil's advocate here. There's going to be a lot of people like me and Ben. Ben, yes, your your computer is now powerful enough to do the blur effect. <laughs> um, I think there are a lot of people like me and Ben who use a Mac and we don't really want to build a PC. And so I think for a lot of us, like Ben and I, we're more willing to pay $500 for a console because we don't we don't want a PC. Like, I have no desire for a Windows 10 machine. No, not really, not at all. Like I, I, but I have, still don't really want to pay five hundred for a, a new console. I would, I would love to not pay five hundred. <laughs> like I would love to get the Series X for four hundred. But I'm okay I'd with paying five hundred. I'd be a lot more comfortable at four fifty. Even I mean, five hundred is one of those things where it's going to be like, damn, that's that's pretty pricey. Out a fair amount. Yeah, and I guess five four fifty is something that I hadn't really thought of because that is. Like fifty bucks is, I mean it's 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 not a significant like it's not an insignificant amount of money like it is a lot of money but like it it could do a lot to like soften the blow of of that price tag. What did PS4 debut price wise debut at four hundred? Oh damn! All right, so, and it was so a whole hundred bucks cheaper. And yep. PS4 smoked the Xbox One. And so I think that I, I, the general consensus seems to be that a lot of people are expecting both PS5 and Series X to launch at 500. And so Ben, to your point, if Series X came at 450, like exactly, it worked for Sony this generation. And I mean, well, 50, 50 bucks is 50 bucks. 450. That would See, I would appreciate that a lot because I'm afraid that they're going to launch the Series X and the Series S, and because I'm me, I'm going to have to get them both. See, I'm honestly expecting whichever one debuts first, whether it's 450, 500, a week later we're going to hear from the other, and it's going to be an undercut of you some think kind so? of amount. Yeah, it's been happening since God, since PlayStation One initially came out since that one like that really famous e3 conference when they just came oh, out on stage man. and were like 199 and they just and then they just walked off stage smoked was it did they say 199 or 299 i think, I they think said... it was 199 it, it was 299 for the saturn or the dreamcast i believe so whichever one was coming out for that. It, sega saturn yeah. was yeah. the was the one that oh man no i think it was 299 let's look it up playstation launch price but uh to your point ben i i think that their uh 450 could be a could be a silver bullet because yeah, everyone is expecting that that uh you know everyone is expecting that 500 hundred dollar price tag and maybe maybe sony would be able to make an adjustment on the fly Maybe Sony has two plans in place, and they're just waiting. Yeah, because we still haven't even seen the PS5 yet. Yeah, so. uh, it launched it. Dev kit. Kit. Yeah, which so, looks sweet, by the way. I'd be okay with that being a console. Oh, I would not. You can me. It looks like a V. It looks like a five. It's great. It looks it terrible. It does look like a five, but it also <laughs> looks like it was made by AudioVox. <laughs> <laughs> so Sega Saturn launched in 1995 at 399 and then in that uh e3 press conference he came out and just said 299 and he left and that was like you're right tim that that was like your point stands that that was like a monumental moment that destroyed sega yep i mean things things had been kind of going downhill for sega for a little while at that point they had lost out on the uh the um was it silicon graphics deal i think so i mean they also had like scrapped the neptune they were having abysmal sales with the 32x the sega cd had pretty much failed it was kind of 
Like, they, they were, were on life support at that point. Yeah, they were running on fumes because uh, Sega of Japan had pushed, like, we need hardware every year. And every year they were asking people to buy 32X, uh, Sega CD, you know, and just wasn't working out. But but anyways, back to the back to the Series X. So uh, one one more thing I wanted to talk about with you guys. So Microsoft has said that they are that they're guaranteeing that digital ownership of Microsoft games will transfer from the Xbox One to the Series X. And they've said that they're working very hard with third parties to make that same thing true for third party games. I, it's frustrating to me that that's not just a given that it's not just your digital ownership is all coming across. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, at this fucking point, if I'm buying names digitally, I should own them. They should be locked to my account. I should be able to play them across any platform that supports it at this point. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. And like, if you can do it with the disc, exactly what you said, Tim, you should own that yeah it's just a different like form of media that you're owning like there should be no difference in that case yeah and the fact that some companies think that oh no it's a new console it's a new version of the game no you're gonna pay for it again it's like no i'm not gonna do that not anymore exactly when at this day and age i should be able to have everything in one place which was the entire idea of the xbox one initially (laughs) it's why it's called the xbox one yeah, but they have been very good. Like all the games that I bought digitally on 360, I own. I still can play pretty much yep. for the most part now on Xbox One X. Same. That's true, and and that's been, uh, I that's been largely a result of the backwards compatibility initiative. But now that backwards compatibility is just every single Xbox One game just works in the Series X. Um, it's a much larger task to, to take on. And so for them to, to ask for digital ownership to transfer from third parties, I mean, I understand why third parties would be resistant to it. Uh, but I think that Tim, kind of what you were saying of like, it just because it's a new console doesn't mean that you're any different. Doesn't mean that you're buying, like you, you still bought these things from Microsoft, you should, you should just, it's all the same platform. You should just own it. Well, and it's, yeah, like, I mean, if I would understand if, if it like, if the third party developer had to do additional work for right. it to work on there, I would understand them being like, yeah, you have to pay us again. Like that would make sense to me. But it's like, if I'm literally just playing the exact same game that you released on the other console, just on a different console. Why the fuck would I have to pay for it again? Exactly. And like, I mean, <clears throat> I you guys know me. I like to collect. And so I bought most of my Xbox One games physically. And the fact, like, I, I'm i not like laughing at anyone. I'm not saying like, oh, I told you so or anything. Because I know that I am I am antiquated in this decision. But like the fact that I don't have to worry but someone who did buy all digital like ben i think most of your games are digital yeah i bought like like i started out this generation buying physical but then i switched to just digital because it just is easier exactly save space and don't have enough space for all those don't have to go to a store and buy the game and so the fact that like for someone like me who is making the antiquated decision the worst decision. I know that. I don't have to worry, but you guys do. That is so ass backwards. And like Microsoft absolutely should not be allowing that to happen. Well, and that's where you wonder if like some of these third party devs are going to start doing like things like EA's fucking all access and, yeah, like that you play plus or whatever it is. Ubisoft shit has. like that. Yeah. Where yeah. it's like here you pay us yearly and you can keep up playing our fucking games. And you get access to all these games that you already paid for. It's like <laughs> fuck you. Yep. Yeah, I, I do much. think 
Ben, I do think that that's going to be much more popular this generation. EA Access, you play Plus. Um, I guarantee you Activision will make one. And it's all like it's gonna it's gonna be like okay i have to subscribe to disney plus netflix hulu amazon prime and it's like why can't i just pay for one well i mean it'll be one of those things where it's gonna be like oh uh, sweet i already play for game pass so i'll just pay play the fucking games that are on game pass exactly and i mean i think game pass is poised as kind of like the netflix of the video game world in the sense that like it's the one that everyone it, it's the one that was there first and so everyone is already paying for it and so everyone else who enters the market it's just they're asking you to make an additional because you're already so accustomed to game pass they're asking you to make an additional purchase uh-huh. they're not competing with game pass because you're already like oh yeah game pass is just something i have um yeah but what bothers me is that like all these other all these companies are going to be starting their own like you know their own services like this and it's going to become a situation where it's like they're asking you to pay for games that you already own that you already you already paid for them you know on on the Xbox one or the Xbox 360 so yeah got me real pissed off that like I don't have to worry but you guys do that's fucking dumb yep yeah it's pretty weird pretty weird uh but otherwise seems like they're really nailing everything else um do you guys have any any final thoughts on the xbox series x but i wish that they would pull a sonic and change the name let's tweet at them (laughs) yeah (laughs) get that going gotta fix series x hashtag fix it like sonic yeah that's good uh so i guess then we'll get that twitter we'll get that uh hashtag rolling and everyone all our listeners i'm talking to most of you iHeartRadio people in finland please tweet it <laughs> uh <laughs> but now it's time for the weekly trivia challenge trivia! yes All right. This week's weekly trivia challenge was chosen, and she wanted me to let you guys know by Jillian. All right. Oh, boy. I'm screwed. Which character... I think you guys both are, to be fair. (laughs) Which character gives the player tutorials in Candy Crush Saga? Is it A, Mr. Yeti, B, Bubblegum Troll, C. John Carpenter is the thing, or D. Mister Toffee. B. I'm gonna go with the Yeti one. Tim, you're going A. Mister Yeti. Final answer. Yeah. Ben, you're going B. Bubblegum Troll. Final answer. Oh no, that's not as good as I thought it was. A, Mr. Mr. Yeti, Yeti or Mr. B, Toffee. Bubblegum Troll, C, John Carpenter's The Thing, or D, Mr. Toffee. I don't know why you're not considering John Carpenter's The Thing. I mean, hmm. I'm kind of considering it, but not <laughs> seriously. <laughs> uh, for interest of their potential of if tim's wrong i'm gonna go mr toffee because that's candy and it's about candy i guess yet he's not candy do you finally Yeti's answer mr toffee candy sure well ben you nailed it good job nice I was like, it's candy and bubblegum troll. That was my first thought because I was, I just heard bubblegum, I think. And I was like, well, bubblegum is kind of candy. But then I was like, troll. Bubblegum no, is that's kinda weird. candy. <laughs> and then I was like, well, it's either Mr. Yeti or Mr. Toffee. And Toffee is candy. And the game's called Candy Crush. There you go. Some kind of Yeti being associated with it, but I could be wrong. Uh, Mr. Yeti is a character in the game. Okay. And I don't know if you guys knew this, but John Carpenter's The Thing is not a character in the game. What? 
I wow. am pretty sure I, you're wrong about that. Never would have guessed. <laughs> well, Ben, why don't you play Candy Crush Saga and let me know if John Carpenter's The Thing is in it. It just seems like something I'd have to buy. I don't think you do, though. I think the whole point of the game is to be free so that they can get you addicted so that then you pay for it. Yeah, microtransactions up the butt. Mm -hmm. Oh, that sounds terrible. I don't want to do that. Okay. Don't fall into that trap. That's all we've got for you guys tonight. Um, And actually, that's all we've got for you guys this year. Because... Tim and I will be traveling next week, and then the following Tuesday is New Year's Eve, so I'd imagine Ben will be doing something. Um, But we'll be back next year on January 7th, talking about Game of the Year, having that conversation. So uh, don't forget to subscribe on whatever platform you found us on. You can see everything we do all in one spot over at coldnorthpro.com. Until next year, reset. Oh.